Welcome back to the Jack Swarbrick Show. Our next guest is Notre Dame women's swimmer, Catherine Mulquin. The Notre Dame swimming and diving program continued its resurging 2016-17 season last week in routing Ball State on both the men's and women's side. The Fighting Irish women now travel down to Atlanta for the women's ACC championships that get started Monday evening in Atlanta. Contributing to the team's tremendous success, is our next guest, senior Captain Mulquin. The two-time captain has been a big contributor on the women's side, being currently ranked number 24 in the CSCAA Coaches Poll. Mulquin, a Rockville, Maryland native, competes in the backstroke freestyle and is a key leg in the Irish relay teams. Mulquin is an accounting major in the Mendoza College of Business, and after graduation, she plans to return to South Bend to complete her Master's of Science in Accountancy right here on campus. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Talk to me about how well the women's and men's team are doing right now. What do you think the key to that is? I think it's really the team camaraderie that we have this year. Uh, we combined last end of December, beginning of January after our holiday training trip. And ever since then, it's been a really close, tight family. And I think that really helps everyone push each other to a better, faster level than we ever have before. Training alongside the men it definitely has upped our game. Um, and I think that helps a lot. Yeah, let's talk about that, because the two teams have been combined. While you compete against women, you practice with the men each right. and every day. At first, was that a little weird? Yeah, the waves are way bigger that you have to swim through, for sure. Um, it feels like a way bigger team, and I think that gives everyone a lot more support and a lot more competition, which helps a lot. Uh, but it's, it's definitely been different, that's for sure. Have the guys sometimes suggested some things that they have seen when, when you're swimming that maybe some of your female teammates had not suggested in the past? I think it's helped in the fact that guys are a little bit more vocal. Um, whether that be stroke technique or just telling you to kind of get it going when you need to hear it a little bit on a rough day or whatnot. But um, I think it's helped in the fact that, you know, some of the guys automatically think that they'll be best than some of the girls, and that's helped push us to show them wrong a little bit. And it, I think it goes both ways, and it helps a lot. All right, I won't make you embarrass anybody, but are some <laughs> of the girls beating the guys in some of the practice heats? Uh, some of the girls' best events and the guys' off events, I'd say it does happen sometimes. And that has to be uh, <laughs> creating a certain level of intense practice competition. Yeah, which is great. I imagine it also might, because all of us work in co-ed environments. Uh, I've worked in TV newsrooms much of my life, and guys seem less sensitive about both criticizing and hopefully good-naturedly ribbing than girls are. Have you sensed that as well? Uh, yeah, I feel like they take a little bit less offense to it, yeah. but that's helped us learn. Has it I loosened think? up the, the yeah. females on the team a little uh, bit? Yeah, I think you've seen the girls become more vocal. We mentioned a little bit in the intro some of the great success that you have had recently. Uh, one of them, your leadoff leg in the 200 medley relay team, won the event last week and broke the Ball State University pool record with a time of 143.02. The former record stood at 144.47, so you smash that record. <laughs> your record setting comes just after you were involved in breaking three different records in your last home meet of your career at Notre Dame. The 200 free relay team broke the Notre Dame women's 200 free relay record with a time of 129.93. You set a school record in your leadoff lit in the 400 medley relay your time of 52.84 broke the previous backstroke record that had been set in 2011 and your 400 medley relay team broke the pool record for the 400 medley relay with a time of 335.40 that that's a dramatic improvement in a lot of areas yeah. what was it like for you because you were nice enough we sent a camera chasing you down with <laughs> Tamara Brown right after you got out of the pool uh, I was amazed that you could speak so clearly right after that kind of an effort but what does it mean to you after all the work you've put in to be competing at this high level right now? Um, I think it was our first opportunity. We were able to put suits on, racing suits, for the relays. Um, so we automatically get a little bit more excited for those. And it gives you a little bit more confidence going into it, knowing that you're in a racing suit and knowing that like it's definitely time to get going. Um, but that was my senior meet, and I think a little bit of a senior swim came out there, knowing that it was kind of my last chance to do that. And, you know, the record board is something that you look at every day in practice, multiple times a day, multiple practices a day. Um, so that was always a goal of mine. I didn't know just how achievable it was. 
came as a little bit of a shock, but no better way to do it than being part of a relay record, too. So now when you walk in there and look up there and your name's on the record board, you just get a tingly feeling all over. Yeah, I still can't really believe it. <laughs> How disappointed will you be if somebody breaks it? I won't be disappointed at all. Um, I knew the previous record holder, Kim Holden. She mm -hmm. was here when I came from my recruiting trip, so I had known her, and she was someone that I've always kind of look up, looked up to ever since then, and she was like the star of the team and someone that – yeah, everyone looked to, and she actually reached out to me afterwards and was super nice about it. So being able to do that for the next person, I'm already looking forward to. I expected nothing less. That's a great answer to kind of a tough question, but that's the answer <laughs> that I expected. For whatever reason, I've found this year, I work in this building, I've had more and more just fans asking me where the pool is because they want to <laughs> go watch the action. We're, we're in the, coming off an Olympic year. Right. Uh, swimming always is at the forefront of the Summer Olympics. Do you notice that there's more interest, friends, family, fans in an Olympic year? Absolutely. Everyone says that they're a swim fan in the year of the Olympics because they feel like they know who Michael Phelps is, Katie Ledecky and all that, just by watching in the August. But um, there is a little bit more of a fan base following that. Uh, but this year has been really good in terms of turnout in the stands. It's been great. And, and you mentioned the different suits you got to put on for the, the relay. Talk about... The technology, because people wonder, oh, come on, does that really make that much difference? I know the – do you guys wear the two swim caps like Michael Phelps yeah. did as well? And that's a recent thing. All those little things make that much difference, huh? Uh, they do. I mean, it definitely does make a difference. I feel like a lot of it is also, also mental. It gives you confidence just knowing that these are supposed to work and they're supposed to help work the magic. So I, I'd say it's both, but it definitely does help. And you really have to pay attention to how you train, when you train, different methods of training. I know cupping became all the rage. <laughs> uh, Michael Phelps and some of the other swimmers were doing it, and there's a debate whether that helps or not. Have you ever cupped, had that kind of uh, – I have. Did, did I, it help you? I'd say it does. I think people just – like to walk around with bruises, bruises over up. showing that <laughs> they look, look fast. Like you're committed, right? <laughs> right, absolutely. I, I'm letting, I'm getting bruises to help you <laughs> swim. You're now in what's known as a period of tapering, though, in your training. Explain what that is. Right, so taper is when we start to tone it down in terms of the yardage and the intensity. So, obviously, swimmers work very hard day in and day out, um, and we're up early most mornings. So, this is kind of the time where coach asks us to put our legs up, not walk as far, not be standing on our feet, not be um, going to bed super late. And, you know, everything when it comes down to nutrition, hydrating, and just doing everything you can so that we're not sore when it comes time to championship. And the ACC championships begin on Monday in Atlanta. So when do you start to crank it back up? Uh, well, that is going to be the end meet for a lot of people, but hopefully we'll have – a really big squad going to NCAAs um, following that. So whoever will be going to NCAAs will be getting right back in the pool. Um, and the ones who won't will probably have about a few days off and get right back into it, to be honest. So when do you stop? You're in tapering now. When does tapering yeah. stop? We, we're, we're recording this on Wednesday night. So when does tapering stop? Uh, with the meet. It leads straight up to the meet. Okay. So we started a few weeks ago. And so you're as strong as you possibly can be at the meet. So you're, you're still training. Yeah. Yep. You're just not training as hard. Yeah, so there's days that you really go for it, and then you'll have a recover day and sleep in a little bit later. And you talked about you're an accounting major, and when you graduate, you're going to come back here and get your Master's of Science in Accountancy. I know people who have done that. I know it's mm -hmm. not easy. What do you plan to do with those two degrees? Uh, this summer, I have an internship with Ernst & Young in D.C., so they know that I'll be doing the fifth year here and then uh, hopefully going back there in the McLean office. Outstanding. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure to get a chance to interview. Thank you, and good luck in Atlanta. Thank you very much. We'll be back with Notre Dame men's basketball assistant coach Ryan Ayers in just a moment. This is the Jack Swarbrick Show.